going to show you the process of making a skit in Gotcha Life. Yeah, you've been playing Gotcha Life a lot this mm -hmm. summer. I'm a Addicted. This community has a massive problem with inappropriate or ignorant content. Some of this sh it, it, it's just so bad. It, it's it's really, really bad. It's a very, very family-friendly app made for nine-year-olds, okay? Nine plus is what they're saying. Nine plus! Playing with action figures, watching Saturday morning cartoons, going outside. This was what the world was like for kids growing up in the early 2000s, but today kids entertainment has moved from playing with toys to playing on tablets. A lot of parents these days rely on mobile apps to keep their children entertained for hours. And one of the most popular apps being used by kids is Gotcha Life. Gotcha Life is an anime themed game where you design your avatar. But what makes Gotcha Life stand out is how it gives players a platform to be creative. With its studio mode, Gotcha Gotcha Life players can create scenes for their characters to interact with others. It's like a virtual dollhouse where you can play out thousands of possible scenarios. But letting your imagination run wild might not always be a good thing. Because even innocent stories made in Gotcha Life hide some of the most disgusting content you'll see on the internet. So how did such a harmless kids game become so twisted? To answer that, let's turn back time and find out how it all started. The father of Gotcha Life. Before Gotcha Life was created, there was Looney. Looney was a 19 year old game animator with a dream. On April 1st, 2012, Looney co-founded his own game studio with his friends called Cyan Productions. Cyan Productions sometimes made animated series, but their main focus was game development. The studio worked on simple anime style flash games. Cyan Productions released around 20 games from the year 2012 to 2015. These games were shut down and are no longer playable. We don't know a lot about Sign Productions and their games from the mid 2010s. Back then when games like Farmville were super popular online, Sign Production games kinda went unnoticed. But things started to shift in 2015. During that year, Looney decided to give Sign Productions a new name, Lunami Games, named after himself. This change marked a turning point to Lunami Games forever. Lunami Games switched from their signature Cyan theme to a cute chibi art style for all their upcoming games. Their first game being Anime Gacha. Anime Gacha is based on Japanese toy vending machines where you pop in tokens and hope to get the prize you want. Anime Gacha was basically a loot box simulator, but it laid the foundation for what we know today as the Gacha franchise. Starting from Anime Gacha and on to Gacha Studio, each new game in the series basically built upon the last one. This was actually a smart move because Lunami Games' consistent gotcha feature helped them get more and more fans as time went on. And in 2018, Lunami Games really hit the jackpot. That year, Lunami Games went from another indie studio to becoming one of the hottest mobile game developers thanks to its latest title, Gotcha Life. Gotcha Life combined the features of Lunami Games' earlier releases, making it their biggest game to date. But there was one thing that skyrocketed Gotcha Life to the top rankings on mobile app stores. It was Looney himself. You see, Looney is also a YouTuber who creates Gotcha Life content. By encouraging his community to create similar content, he was able to get players to market the game for him. Not only did did it kickstart the careers of young YouTubers, but it also helped Gotcha Life get over 100 million downloads. But with the player base growing bigger than all their previous games combined, Lunami Games struggled to keep things in check. Looney updated Gotcha Life to make it more appropriate to its player base of kids to the best of his ability, but he wasn't responsible for the overwhelming amount of inappropriate Gotcha Life videos that get uploaded to social media. As more and more players download the game, Lunami Games found themselves facing a bit of a challenge. You see, their player community was now larger than all their earlier games combined. Looney did his best by rolling out updates to make Gotcha Life better for the community. But he couldn't keep up with the huge flood of inappropriate Gotcha Life videos popping up all over social media. This is when Gotcha Life's reputation took a turn for the worse. Gotcha's soulless content farms. In 2017, a thousand children were asked what their dream jobs were. You think you can take a guess? If you answered YouTuber, you're right. And the results today are still the same. A survey in 2022 pointed out that YouTuber was the top choice. Thousands of kids took their first step in becoming YouTubers because of Gotcha Life. They even have a name for this, Gotcha Tuber. YouTubers who create videos based on the game Gotcha Life. There are many Gotcha Tubers that make a range of different content that I'm sure you're aware of. One of the most popular Gotcha Life videos are Gotcha Life mini movies 
but there are also series, music videos, tutorials, skits, memes, animation, speed paints, and more. The Gacha Life community stands out from many other fan groups because of how passionate they are for content creation. Sorting through Gacha Life YouTube videos uploaded in the past hour, you'll notice something wild. Gacha Life videos are uploaded almost every minute. With so many kids sharing their videos for the world to see, Gacha Life turned into a YouTube genre of its own. Lunami Games successfully used Roblox's formula of having kids become both the creator and the audience, but the success was short-lived. Gacha Life videos on YouTube aren't just being made by passionate gacha tubers anymore. They're also made by channels that turn Gacha Life videos into content farms. Content farms are channels that push large amounts of videos with low quality and no original. What's like the best factory farm type of content on the internet? If your answer is anything but Gotcha Life, <laughs> you're wrong. The biggest example of this is Gotcha Life TikTok compilations on YouTube. These channels post every day. All of them are re-uploaded Gotcha Life videos from TikTok with bare minimum editing. And nothing is original. Every compilation video you watch is just a mashup of stuff taken from other content creators. And these channels use the same kind of titles on their videos and have similar channel names. They even use suggestive thumbnails to clickbait viewers. These types of videos get pushed out on YouTube even if they're clearly copied straight up. When channels with little to no effort are pushed out, it becomes tough for gacha tubers who actually put a lot of effort into their content. Because of this, it's left a bad impression on the gacha life community and even the ones with clear talent. The number of content farms overtaking gacha tubers is only the tip of the iceberg. Because with so many low effort gacha life videos being uploaded every minute, there are harmful videos hidden among them. The channels behind these inappropriate videos even managed to outsmart YouTube's content moderation, the disgusting realm of gacha heat. To reiterate, content farms are run by people who don't care about quality. All they care about is making a quick buck. And in our world today, many businesses just try to create products that cost them near nothing and sell them for as cheap as possible. But there are some shining exceptions. One of our favorites, Holzkern. Founded as a small family business, Holzkern is now the leading brand of wooden watches and natural jewelry. They focus on bringing nature into everything they create. Every piece is unique because they're made with the patterns of the earth like actual wood and stone. Holzkern carries a lot of options from necklaces, bracelets, rings, sunglasses, handbags, and my favorite, watches. So I have my own watch and necklace and the quality is truly incredible. If you buy their products, Holzkern gives you free express shipping so it arrives quickly and has a 24 month warranty. And something that I've never heard of before is that for US customers, you don't pay taxes. So click the link in the description because I want you guys to find something that you're proud to wear. And if you use the code VENTURE15, you get 15% off any product. This jewelry isn't just about looks. You'll be wearing a piece made from nature to remind you that life is more than just sitting behind a computer screen. Thank you to Holskern for sponsoring this video. On YouTube, 720,000 hours of content get uploaded every day. So how does the site's algorithm tell if you're breaking its guidelines? This is our speculation. Please take it with a grain of salt. A lot of apps like Amazon use industry standard AI tools. These tools are used for moderating and following guidelines on their platform. YouTube is a prime example. You see, whenever you upload a video, YouTube's algorithm checks for two things. If your video uses copyrighted content and if it's suitable for ads. An ad suitability check scans through a video to tell if there's anything inappropriate. Some of these AI programs are even smart enough to tell the difference between different types of alcohol just based on the liquid. For YouTube, these content moderation filters are trained using machine learning. The AI goes through millions of images to learn what's safe and what's not. But inappropriate gotcha life videos are slipping through YouTube's cracks. These problematic videos are so well known that there's even a name for it, Gotcha Heat. But why is catching inappropriate Gotcha Life videos so difficult for AI? As far as we know, it isn't trained enough to understand innocent looking content, especially children's animations. But this was happening even before Gotcha Life existed, and the internet knew this as the Elsa Gate controversy, where inappropriate videos slipped through content filters. This controversy was about videos on YouTube featuring popular characters for kids. But if you watch further into the videos, these videos were anything but harmless because they contained shock content. And these videos targeted kids. So what was Elsagate and Gacha Heat's secret to avoid moderation? It could be that they almost never featured dialogue. Because of this, it seems that it's even harder to tell what's appropriate from what's not. Moderating Gacha Heat became so problematic that TikTok tried to stop users from searching Gacha Life altogether. The term Gacha Life is actually banned on TikTok. Looking it up directly leads to no results found. 
but while you're typing it in, it's clear to see they didn't do a very thorough job of blocking that content out, as the autofill shows purposeful misspellings to find that exact content. For Gacha Heat videos, the content varies from videos with sensitive storylines to graphic violence. What's horrifying is how easy it is to stumble across these videos. When we typed the letter G in the YouTube search bar, Gacha Heat was already one of the search predictions. Scrolling through the reviews of Gacha Life on child safety websites, you can see that most of the reviews aren't talking about the app. Parents are criticizing Gacha Heat videos that their children were watching. And these inappropriate videos are more common than you think. If you leave your kids with a tablet and they're on gotcha life this is eventually what it'll probably autoplay to okay it's only natural for parents to get upset knowing their kids find and watch these gotcha heat videos but for one family their story would uncover a major problem within the gotcha life community itself hashtag save the gotcha community Gacha Heat existed even before Gacha Life was around. Some of the earliest Gacha Heat videos can be traced back to 2017. This was right after the release of Gacha Studio, the first game in the franchise that introduced Studio Mode. It was only after 2018 when Gacha Life was launched that Gacha Heat videos started picking up steam. Soon enough, Gacha Heat went from being contained within the Gacha Life community and into mainstream media. On December 16th, 2019, Brazilian news channel Balanço Geral featured Gacha Life in its news report. The segment talked about how a young Gacha Life player was exposed to Gacha Heat. His aunt was shocked to find out about this, which led her to bringing this problem to the local media. The news report on Gacha Life attracted more views than normal, but these views didn't come from concerned parents. They were from the Gacha Heat community who wanted to silence it. But how do we know that? The video received more dislikes than likes. Even though the Gacha Life segment was only 10 minutes out of a three hour long video, most of the comments were from angry Gotcha Life fans. They were upset that the video was drawing more attention to the bad side of the community. Some fans were even worried that Gotcha Heat would cause Looney, the game's creator, to get arrested. Brazilian Gotcha tubers even made videos calling out Balanço Geral. They used the hashtag Save the Gotcha Community to warn people to stop giving attention to the inappropriate side of Gotcha Life. The amount of Gotcha Heat videos seemed to overpower the good side of the Gotcha community. Some fans feel that the only way for Gotcha Heat to go away is if people People just ignored it, but there are also those who feel Looney is responsible. Allow me to show you some of the actual things present in this game. Very inappropriate poses, expressions, and abilities to play the game. Very, very disgusting references. Even though Looney updated the game to remove most of these features, it was too late. Gacha Heat videos were still being made and the community's reputation was worse than ever. Over the years, hashtag save the gacha community was used by a lot of different gacha tubers to try and fix the problems happening to the game. Some even use the hashtag to gain views, making videos that don't have anything to do with saving the community. Because of these controversies, this left the Gotcha Life community divided. I'm gonna be talking about why I don't upload Gotcha videos anymore. Gotcha community was just getting, it was getting too toxic and out of control and I just, didn't want to be associated with that. With the Elsa Gate horrors and the TikTok bans, you'd think that YouTube is the hub for all these Gotcha Life problems. But what if I told you that Gotcha Life still has yet to hit rock bottom? And this next chapter will show you exactly what I mean. A hazard to kids. Most social media platforms are listed as 12 plus, but that doesn't stop younger Gotcha Life players from making accounts to connect with each other. And what's one place where many people can come together about the things they love? Amino. The social media app Amino is the perfect place where anyone can make their own community for the things they're passionate about. If you search Gotcha Life on Amino, you can find a lot of different communities. So if you're a Gotcha Life fan, which one do you join? This was the problem faced by Kala. Kala joined Amino because she wanted to look for other Gotcha Life players just like her, but instead what she found scarred her forever. Because she was new to Amino, she wasn't sure which Gotcha Life community to be a part of, so she decided to join a few of them. Among these communities, there was one that stood out to her the most. When Kala tried to join this community, she received a message from someone who claimed to be working for Amino. This person explained to her that the community she tried to join was a safe space for young girls, and if she wanted to be a part of it, she had to send a photo of herself to verify who she was. But this wasn't just 
just any photo. This person asked for an inappropriate one. Thankfully, Kala knew something was off and told her mother immediately. Her mom was horrified and reported what her daughter found to the authorities. Kala was safe, but the same couldn't be said for all those people who already joined that community. Since Lunami Games removed the chat feature in order to protect younger players, the only way to talk to other players is outside of the game itself. Horrible people always find a way to take advantage of these players. Even some beloved gacha tubers have been exposed for manipulating their fans to do horrible things. Gacha Life was intended for kids, but the community has grown so much that it's even attracted an older audience. There isn't much Lunami Games could do because the dangers now go further than the game itself and its problems aren't gonna go away anytime soon. Being part of a gaming community is supposed to be fun. It's a place where you can laugh, cry, and even share lifelong friendships. But remember this, the internet gives us access to pretty much everyone, but it also gives everyone access to us. So explore this space with care. Visual Venture. Wait, before you go, click this playlist right here to watch more dark internet documentaries because the algorithm is going to promote my channel more if you guys watch multiple videos. Thank you guys so much for being here. I love you guys so much. Peace.